Okay, welcome back guys. So in this part of the workshop, I want you to um, do a bit more of what we did before, but um, with a bit more detail. Um, and so we're going to be sourcing data again, uh, counting data again, using the sum function, but this time I want you to do it and I'll ask you questions throughout. So first of all, um, I've prepared here a little table for you, um, which you will find in your version of um, the data set as well and in this table I want you to um, count the different um, dietary requirements of people depending on whether they answered the first question with agree or disagree okay so uh, we're not going to do the full set of questions here because that would take too long but if you want to that's something that you could do as an extended task at home so make sure that you then um, um, add all of the other options that people had for question one here and do the count that way as well. But for today, we just want to do um, that for um, the categories of agree and disagree. Now, if you remember previously, we ordered this data set by answer one. So we've got all of the agrees here and then all of the disagrees here. Um, however, these ones, uh, these answers to question two are not in order. They are still random. Now we can in Excel order things by two levels, and that's what we're going to do now. So just as before, we want to highlight um, all of this data, okay, from column A through to E. And then in the Home tab, we want to again go to Sort and Filter, Custom Sort. Now it still has our selection from before in here, which is we've um, sorted the data by answer one. And now we want to add a level, and we want to sort the data also by answer two. And what that will do is we will have all of the people with the answer agree to question one. And then within that, we will have these answers to question two in alphabetical order as well. So if I click OK, that's exactly what happens. So these four people here have answered the question um, one with agree and question two with gluten free. Um, and we can essentially then put that into the correct place in our table. So we have agree and gluten free, a number of four. And I'd like you to complete this table just like we did before for all of the rest of um, the first few um, people who answered the questionnaire. Um, you can either leave blank um, if there is a score of zero or enter zero as a score. That's up to you. Um, and then we will go from there. So I'll ask you a few questions. I'm going to ask you for the frequencies of these. Um, and um, then you can continue with the workshop after that. Okay, so hopefully your table looks like this one. Um, we have 29 people in the agree um, uh, category who said they had no preference or requirement in their diet, 10 vegetarians, six vegans, and so on. Um, so uh, the next thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to sum these up um, in the same way that we did before. So remember we did, um, we typed equals, and then sum, opened a bracket, and then highlighted all of the cells we wanted to sum up. So I'd like you to do that now, but for this range here, okay, so I'd like you to sum up all of the people that have said agree, and all of the people that have said disagree. And then once you give me the answer, we will continue with the workshop. Okay, now if you've paid attention, you would have noticed that that question wasn't exactly rocket science, because you have previously actually summed up all of the people that have answered question one with agree and it was 52. So it's nice to see that you have the same result here and obviously summing up seven and three wasn't very difficult um, and you'd also done that previously. You knew that there were 10 people altogether who have said um, that they disagreed with that statement. Okay, so um, this is now um, a table, a frequency table that contains two variables and not just one. Um, we have the variable about diet and we have the variable variable about um, um, uh, the opinion of people on um, their actions and climate change. Um, and as you might remember from the lecture, you can't do um, you can't produce pie charts when you have more than one variable. A pie chart can only ever show you one. So in order to show this data, you would either have to produce separate pie charts for these two, um, uh, for these two rows of data, so one for agree, one for disagree, or, and that would be the better way to do it, you can create a clustered bar chart, and that's what we're going to do now. So as before, we want to highlight all of 
um, the cells that we want to include. We don't want to include the totals down here. And that includes the names for the, for the categories as well as their frequencies. Okay, so once you've highlighted all of this, we go into insert. And this time, instead of the pie chart, select bar charts or column charts in Excel. Um, and we want to use the clustered bar chart, which is over here. Click OK, um, and it produces it for you there. Now, one thing um, that's um, possible to do is you can manipulate charts. And that's one of the things that I want to do a little bit later in the module with you. So for now, um, these are the um, functions that I wanted to show all of you in Excel. And if you still have time, I'd like you to have a look at the extended task where I'm going to explain to you how to um, get this information uh, into uh, frequency tables like this um, without having to sort the data first. Um, so by using Excel functions and using the functionality that the program has, we can actually skip quite a few steps in what we've just done. But that depends on how good um, you know the program. And hopefully over the course of this module, you will get to know Excel quite well and uh, you will find these little shortcuts um, quite useful. Okay, so as I said, that's it for, uh, for today. If this is the end of your workshop, um, you're free to go. Otherwise, please um, go on to the extended task, the extra task, and try that as well. If you don't have time to do that right now, I do recommend you have a look at it in your free time, um, because the more you learn how to use Excel, the better for your course as well as for your future career.